Welcome back to Tales of First Ladies. I'm Eleanor Burns. Well, this First Lady quilt was made by Linda Ryan. She named it Feathers and Stars, a great name for her classic-looking quilt. Her mother, Pat L. Nichols, designed this perfect reproduction fabric. Well, in the center, the eagles soar with their striped shields on a large tone-on-tone -tone background. And centered above the eagles is our block for today, the Dolly Madison Star. It's very federal looking with dark blue stripe in the star points and nine patch. And then a softer blue surrounds the nine patch. Well, under the eagles, Linda used a rust colored stripe for the second Dolly Star. You know, stripes were often used in Dolly's time period. Well, Linda hand quilted feathered hearts wreaths and stars throughout her masterpiece. You know, Dolly was some gal. She was one of the most popular and recognized first ladies of the 19th century. She was born in North Carolina to strict Quakers and a very simple way of life. When her grandmother gave her a beautiful gold pin, she knew her parents wouldn't approve. So she wore the pin under her dress where her parents couldn't see it. She married John Todd, a wealthy lawyer and fellow Quaker, in 1790. And three years later, a yellow fever epidemic took her husband and youngest son, already a widow at 25 with one son. She loved people too much to be alone. So she fell in love with James Madison, shorter, 17 years older and not a Quaker. She called him Jimmy and he called her beloved. Well, Dolly bloomed in Washington. Her natural gaiety and love of beauty took over. She became the most famous hostess of all the first ladies. Her fellow citizens loved her for bringing people of different classes and political beliefs together. Well, this is a little tale about Dolly. Unlike most ladies, Dolly was a devout user of snuff tobacco, and she carried two handkerchiefs for the cleanup. Well, I love Dolly, and I love this block. It's a classic, and it's very easy to do. So join me. This is a famous quote from Dolly Madison. There is one secret, and that is the power we all have in forming our own destinies. Good information. Well, I enjoyed making this four block wall hanging. It's easy to do. The four blocks, it has a solid square, side, and corner triangles to set the stars together. Well, this is the block itself. It's got the dark points, the background all around it, and then the medium touching the four patch, the nine patch, actually. It's a nine patch. I can't even count today. Well, this is the diamond in the center. Amy quilted it. She did a little motif out into the light, and then a rope quilting line in the framing border. Great. Well, I have my pieces all set up. We're ready to sew. This is my dark star points. It's a stripe. The light, the background, we work in pairs, and then the dark again with the medium for the center. So just flip these two pieces right sides together. I'm doing a 12 and a half inch star right now. So these pieces are five and a half inches square. Take your ruler, take a six by 12 and a marker and draw a diagonal line corner to corner. And I want to make sure you can see that. That's pretty light. But let's see if I can make it darker right here so you can see. I'll go back and forth, mark it. All right. I'm using a scant quarter inch seam. I have my uh, quarter inch foot on. I move my needle one thread to the right of a quarter inch. And I'm just going to drop my uh, foot with my bar right on the line. My needle is stitching a quarter inch away. 
And so I'm assembly line sewing. You just grab up the second one and drop it right behind. Now watch my machine because I do have an automatic pivot on this machine that when I stop sewing, then the foot just pops up, makes it a lot easier. So I'm just turning it around quickly, putting my foot on the line again. So my stitching should be just a little less than a half inch. All right, and let's jump over to the second one. We are going great. Did you know that Dolly actually is spelled D-O-L-L-E-Y? When I did my research so many times, I found it spelled both ways. It was really hard to find one consistent, D-O-L-L-E-Y. All right, so now I've gone a quarter of an inch down both sides of my lines. I just want to turn my patch and cut this opposite way. I'm cutting up, and then don't pick it up and move it until you cut on your line. You're cutting each piece into fourths. One more right here and across, pick it up and move it there. Okay, now I'm just going to pick this up carefully and take it to the iron. Oh my gosh, if you can get these pieces down correctly, it's so much easier. I like to have my dark up so that whenever I go into it, I can just set the seam and just open and press toward the dark. Now, as I don't always press toward the dark. What you do is you press which direction it lays the best. But I like the dark on this one because I'm going to be able to lock my seams together. And when I can do that, then I'm happy. So I'm going to flip these over, put the dark on the top, and just press into it. I do like to use steam. I know that's a big controversy. Oh, no, do you use steam? Another controversy people say is, do you pre-wash your fabrics? Oh, my goodness. No, I don't do that. Now, let's see if I can get these four stacked up in the same. Okay, that is actually how they look. I'm going to have two here and two here. That's good. Now take these two, and they're going to go like this. And like that. So now what I have to do is open these and take these two and just switch them. One like this and one like this. Perfect. Looking good. And now these are already going to lock right in the center. So all I have to do is just flip these pieces right sides together and lock the seam. And this is good on this one because the seam on the top is going up, the seam on the bottom is going down. And when it goes up like that, it just shoves the seam into the bottom one. So you get that perfect lock. So let me just line these up. Gonna drop my foot, needle down, and zip across. I love my stiletto for this time just to keep that seam flat. And I'm really good with a right hand. It's a little trickier with a left-handed person, but my stiletto is my best companion. I'm just going to show you on one, this little tricky swirling thing that we're going to do. Now, you want to make the center lay flat. Ooh, the match is pretty good. Ooh, but it is pretty bulky right there. So I do this magic swirling trick, and when I look at it, I see that the top seam, the seam going away from me, is going to the right. So to make it swirl, I just grab the bottom seam and just open it up. And of course, it's not going to just pop open for me. Well, sometimes it'll just pop open, and sometimes you have to remove those stitches. But it did pop open. So then once you get that open, let me fiddle. Ah, I got it then it makes this great little four patch right in the center. This seam went this way, this seam went this way, and these are just laying around. So you always think about pressing in a circle, and then you just give it a shot on the back side. Good, perfect, well, I like it. So now let me sure, make sure I turn off the iron and I'm going to square this up 
to four and a half inches. This is a turnable mat, works great for when you have to trim on all four sides. This is a fussy cut ruler that is four and a half inches square. And I like the fussy cut. We're working with a quarter square block and there's got the diagonal lines on the fussy cut. So just put it right in the center of your little turnable mat. Take your green lines and line them up with the seams. Ooh, that is perfect. Now we're gonna trim on all four sides. So just hold it down tight so it doesn't slip and turn. Okay, you can do two sides and then very carefully turn your mat around and trim on the last two sides. And so all you've got is just all those little tips hanging out, smidgens, just take those and get rid of them. Now, this is the first one of eight that I need to make. So let me get done with these. I have my eight quarter square patches finished. We're moving on to the nine patch. They're made from strips. Ooh, strips are easy to do. These are all cut at one and seven eighths inches wide. This one is a little bit longer because we're gonna use it twice. So I just wanna take and flip the dark. I always flip over to the left, flip over to the left, and I'm just gonna assembly line sew these pieces while I tell you more stories about Dolly. As I said, she is quite a gal. Okay, I have needle down and I'm ready to go. Well, you know that whenever she married uh, Jimmy, she could no longer be a Quaker. So then she grew used to privilege and wealth and she abandoned her modest style. And then the next thing we know, she started wearing bright colors and expensive fabrics. Take a look at that picture, you know? She started wearing these low-cut dresses that even her husband, Jimmy, was a little embarrassed because, you know, when she was in the White House, there were all the men around, and he was like, oh, my goodness. But that's what she liked. She just really enjoyed it. And she always was showing a little cleavage, a little bit more than she probably should have. So, okay, now I'm just going to set the seam on the dark, open, and press into the dark. I've got these chained together, go across like this. So there she was in all of these beautiful dresses, and she was young, and she was beautiful, and she could do that. And then all of a sudden, she grew older. Well... You know, you can't show that when you're older. Okay, I have to turn off the steam. This is just steaming away without me. So now all I have to do is just this right here and do this right here. Two more strips to sew. So she changed her focus from all of these low dresses that she wore to kind of covering herself up here when she was a little older and she started wearing turbans. Oh my goodness. And such talk. It was rumored that she spent $1,000 a year on turbans alone. And I think, you know, back then, oh, I bet you could have bought a house with all of the money that Dolly spent on turbans. What do you think? But anyhow, she was quite a gal. I know why all the men like to stand next to her, don't you think? Times haven't changed at all. Okay, so I'm just about ready to do my last pressing on this and press toward the dark. I'm going to drop this on, dark on the top, set the seam, open. One more, dark on the top seam open. I told you the nine patch was easy. Now what is fun is that you can just go ahead and layer cut these at the same time. Whoop, turn off the steam. I'm just going to make fun of that. You know how when you learn a new tool, you have to get good at it. This strip goes on the bottom. This strip goes right sides together to it. This is going to be the middle. And so at this point, you can lock your seams, you can layer cut. We're making two blocks, so we have to cut for two. We're going to just take this left end, 
square it off, get rid of it. And since the strips were 1 and 7 eighths, if we want to have squares, we have to do 1 and 7 eighths inch strips as well. Okay, so just line it up. I always think, okay, it's just less than 2 inches. Take this little guy off, get rid of it, and we are going to have a little extra to just get rid of. Okay, one more. One and seven eighths. This is extra. This is already right sides together. You don't have to do any more reorganizing. Just line this up, needle down, hold it, hold that flat with the stiletto, line it up. And sometimes I have to put my stiletto and pull down on it to make it match. I sometimes feel like, oh, I'm putting my foot up on my sewing machine and pulling to give it a match. So just take the second one, got it right on behind, lock it right in place. And this patch should end up being four and a half inches, just like the other ones. Let's see how good I am. Ooh. Perfect. Really good. So now all we have to do, this is the left, this is the middle. We've got these two right pieces and then just take them, flip them right sides together and you push right into them. You, you've got that uh, locking seam right in the middle and when you flip, make sure you don't flip underneath, make sure it's lined up underneath, get that stiletto going, your best friend. I had a little girl that uh, was learning how to sew, and I gave her a stiletto, and that's her treasure. Okay, just one more block, one more strip right here. Line it up. I just shove it in with my finger, get it lined up at the top. I have more stories to tell you about Dolly, such a girl. But I'm going to save it for sewing the block together. We've got two of them, and now we're just going to press the seams toward the center, measure it, make sure it's four and a half inches, and we're good to sew it together. Now we get to play with the stripes in the block. I made two different stacks, paying attention to the stripe, just for the fun of it. If you look at this quarter patch, you see that... The stripes are all going across like this, and in this one, the stripes are all going up and down. So let's deal with that when we lay out the block. You can do it how you want to, but I'm going to take out the nine patch and put them in the center, and then let's just deal with this stack. Let's just put them all around because you can see when you turn them around, they... They rotate, they alternate. Here it's going across, here it's going up and down and across. Well, you could do a little bit of changing if you would like. Entirely up to you because if you took two away, go to the other stack and then just put these in there. Now you see that the stripe is going across in every single patch. So do you like that or do you mind? If they're all just mixed up, it's your choice. It's your block. So now all I need are the four and a half inch corners around like this. And I'm ready to sew it together. So now I sew vertical rows. I always sew from top to bottom continuously. I always take the middle row and flip it over to the left like this. And then I'm just going to go do 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 the whole way down. Now, so I don't have to keep on reaching back and forth and I don't twist anything, I'm going to take the top block in a pair, stack it from the top to the bottom. Oh, if I'm lucky, they're going to come out perfect. And line up the background, get it matched up here, down on the opposite edge, and we are ready to sew. Last step. Okay, I'm still using that scant quarter of an inch so that whenever we open this up and press it, it's going to be 12 and a half inches. 
right here, jump up. Okay, now, I just assembly lined, so this piece comes right behind it. Get everything lined up and just assembly lined. So I always think I'm working for the union label, just pushing this thing, these patches right through. Well, on August 24th, in 1814, Dolly became a true American hero. Well, Britain and America were fighting the War of 1812. And when the British arrived, she was, and they were determined to just destroy Washington, Dolly did not flee with the rest of the residents. Oh, my goodness, what a hero she was. She went from room to room in the president's house, just saving historically precious things. I'm going to cut right here and open it. Okay, so what would be precious? The Constitution the Declaration of Independence, and remember that beautiful painting of George Washington. Okay, I've got this first vertical row in. See how I've connected my threads? I'm not going to clip this apart. And if you look and see right here, see how that's sewn together? And the next match, a quarter inch in, it's going to be perfect. Just great. So now, so I have these all chained together. I'm not going to clip them apart, but I'm going to take the third row and do like I did with the first two. I'm going to stack it from top to bottom. And at this time, I like to put it right in the arm of my sewing machine, right side up, slide this over, and now I'm just going to flip and go right down this row. Sounds good? Well, remember that painting, that beautiful Washington painting by Gilbert Stort? She made sure she saved that. She got it out of the house and sent it with her friends when they were escaping to New York. So, what did she do? Rear Admiral Sir George Cockburn was coming to the White House. And when he arrived at the White House, they found a dinner laid out by Dolly. But she had already escaped. She had planned to take, he had planned to take her back to England and just parade her through the streets of England as a war prize. But she escaped. And as she went out the door, she ripped out red velvet curtains and she took them with her. And, you know, whenever they had their celebration, she made a gown out of that beautiful red velvet. And she wore the gown while she was celebrating victory over the British. Isn't that a great story? She was feisty. Okay, so now I have my vertical row sewn. All I have to do is flip it apart like this. And right here, I'm going to lock these seams. I've got the center. Got one seam going one way, one seam going the other. Let me just line these up and get these last rows sewn. Now this way the block is gonna lay really nice and flat. I have done that vertical row uh, sewing ever since I started quilting and I find it a lot easier. It's like putting pins in at all of these little marks and you don't have to pin whenever you connect them together. Just don't cut them. All right, I have just one more row to sew. Whoops, slow down, Al, and get that little hump sewn. And I'm going to show you how good they match. And perfect. So all I have to do is finish those last two rows, and my block will be done. That was fast, wasn't it? Now take that last seam and press it away from the center. And make sure you have a perfect 12 and a half inches by placing your square up ruler on it. Perfect. There are a number of different blocks named for Dolly Madison. Well, this antique quilt was named Dolly Madison Star by Ruth Finley, President's Block by Nancy Cabot, and Santa Fe by Hearth and Home. You know, it was made around 1880, and it's an Great condition. Note the use of the stripes in the blocks. Oh, they love the stripes. And there are a number of points with pink on pink 
fabric. It's just a simple setting with solid blocks set between the stars. And the border is the same fabric as the background in the stars. Well, this Dolly Madison star was just a top made in the 1930s, bubblegum pink, and then machine quilted recently. Well, the Home Art Company named it Dolly Madison Star, spelling Dolly with no E. It was known by several other names as Texas Star, Hexagonal Star, Garden of Stars, and Friendship Hexagon. Oh, they just love Dolly. Well, in this booklet called White House Quilts, I found this block name, Dolly Madison's Work Basket. Now, it has the pattern included with it, and then the text underneath reads, one of the busiest and most popular first ladies in our history, has been identified with many quilt patterns. This quilt is said to have been inspired by the work she did with orphans. I didn't realize that. But look at this pattern. It's great scrappy. Another name for the pattern is Robbing Peter to Pay Paul. Well, this is one of my ongoing projects. This is definitely on my bucket list. So whether they spelled her first name Dolly with an E or plain Dolly, these quilts are lovely. Enjoy making your blocks. Thank you.